Hi, I'm Nigel and this is Nigel Goes to Space. I've had a really interesting question come in from Jeremy Borges. I hope that's how you pronounce your name, Jeremy. And he says, Nigel, hi, my name is Jeremy and I'm a teacher at an international school. My class and I have watched your program about Pluto and we're fascinated. We'd like to ask you a question about an object in the outer solar system. We've heard rumors about a planet X and we were wondering if you could make a video to help us understand the science behind the rumour. Thank you so much for your help and we will continue to watch Nigel Goes to Space. Well, as you say, Jeremy, there are always rumours of a planet X around. I mean, oddly enough, Pluto itself was called Planet X back in 1930 when it was discovered. X meaning the unknown world beyond the planets that we do know. And is there anything beyond Pluto itself? There's a lot of rubble out there, objects we call Kuiper Belt objects. And in fact, Pluto is just the biggest of those. There are other objects out there as big as Pluto. Eris is a Kuiper Belt object, uh, slightly bigger than Pluto in fact. So there are a lot of worlds like Pluto, but we don't call them planets anymore. Back in 2006, the International Astronomical Union demoted these objects to be merely dwarf planets. So is there a planet X, is there a really big planet, maybe like the Earth or Jupiter out there? What evidence do we have there might be a planet X out there? Well, we haven't found it yet, so we have to look um, by indirect means. We have to sleuth out the evidence in the outer solar system. And basically, we're looking for the effect of the gravity of a world we don't know about, which is stirring up the objects out there. Now, interestingly enough, when we look beyond the orbit of Pluto, there are some small worlds moving in strange orbits. There's one called Sedna, which goes way beyond the planets we know in the solar system. Uh, there's another discovered in 2012 called 2012 VP113, and one discovered as recently as 2015, which goes by a catalogue number, a bit of a, a mouthful, V774104. And the orbits of all these small worlds are lined up in a particular way, which suggests they've been disturbed, shuffled around by the orbit of, by the uh, gravity of something bigger out there until they're all sort of lined up with each other. And if we look, here's a second piece of evidence, if we look at the comets, those are tiny chunks of ice that come from further out from a part of the solar system we call the Oort cloud. Uh, it's a small chunk of ice as it comes towards the sun, a comet heats up and we get that big glowing head and the tail that stretches out into space. If we look at the orbits of these comets and where they come from, again it looks as if a number of them come from the same region. So there could be a planet out there, this same planet we've been talking about, planet X. And this a uh, hypothetical planet that disturbs the small icy worlds and the comets has been dubbed Tyche. The dinosaurs may also have something to tell us about Planet X. Now, of course, the poor dinosaurs were wiped out about 66 million years ago when a big cosmic lump of rock and ice from space hit the Earth in what's now Mexico and blasted out a big crater. If we look through the fossil record of animals and plants that have lived and died on the Earth, we find there have been several mass extinction events like this. And some scientists say that they're regularly spaced. Every 26 million years or so, we get a wipeout of life. Now, if you put two and two together, that means that every 26 million years, um, there's a bombardment of the Earth from space, rocks and ice particles coming from space. And how could that be happening so regularly? One hypothesis is there's a world going around the sun in the Oort cloud, that place I spoke about where the comets come from out beyond the planets. And every 26 million years, it goes into the Oort cloud, it disturbs the comets and sends them whizzing towards the Earth and wiping out life. So that's another possible companion to our sun. It's bigger than the uh, proposed Tyche, and it's been called after the evil big sister of Tycho. It's been called Nemesis. With all these clues to a planet X out there, astronomers have been busy looking with telescopes both on the ground, on the Earth, and up in space. And the most powerful tool they've used is a NASA satellite called the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. And it's looking for heat, that's infrared radiation. Now it may seem a bit odd, even though these icy worlds are so far away from the sun, they do produce a small amount of heat, and that's the easiest way to pick them out. You're not losing them against a background of stars uh, way out there. And the WISE satellite, as it's called for short, did a survey of the entire sky. Now, that's bad news for Nemesis, 
because Nemesis is so far away from the Sun, it goes around every 26 million years according to the theory, then it has to be quite a big world and it would certainly be giving out a lot of infrared. It's what astronomers call a brown dwarf, somewhere between a planet and a star. So I'm afraid we can write off Nemesis. And just by way of an aside, by the way, not everybody even believes in this 26 million year period for extinctions. I mean, I, I for one actually don't, although there are plenty of good scientists who do believe it. But what about something more like a regular planet, like Tyche, which would be not so far out and would be smaller? Wise tells us there isn't a planet as big as Jupiter out there. There might just be one as big as Saturn if it's further out, but certainly it doesn't rule out something which is a bit bigger than the Earth. And my gut feeling is that there is a planet X, Jeremy. There is a planet X out there which is as big as the Earth, maybe two or three times bigger than the Earth, and it is pulling and pushing the Kuiper Belt objects and the Oort Cloud objects and the comets. So I think it's going to be a very exciting few years while astronomers with better telescopes are tracking tracking it down, and when they find it, rest assured, I'll be featuring it on the next episode of Nigel Goes to Space. I hope that's answered your question, Jeremy, and that your class are getting even more intrigued by what's out there beyond the orbits of Pluto and Neptune. And for anyone who's watching this episode, please do send me your questions. Fling them my way if you've got anything you want to know about space, astronomy, what it's like to be an astronaut. Subscribe to Naked Science Channel and join me again on Nigel Goes to Space.